So apparently, you have to do water changes in your tanks. And apparently, guys, you have to feed them specific powders and foods to get them to grow and reproduce in your tank. And guess what? I do neither of those things, and I have bazillions of shrimp, right? So if you're interested in how I do it, keep on watching. Today we're going to do like a mini room tour. My back is horrifically bad, guys. That's why I've not been making videos so much recently in the last what, month or two. But um, it's getting a little bit better now to, to the point where I'm actually able to sit up like this and not be in excruciating pain because I have been for a while. And uh, yeah, let's get on with this and I'll show you what I've got. Alright guys, so I'm going to show you my shrimp. I'm going to show you probably just a couple of levels on each uh, rack here because yeah, my back as I said is quite bad. I'm actually sitting on a tiny little stool and I'm actually finding that it is helping quite a bit. So let me turn the camera around and we'll look at the bottom rack first and then we'll go up the shelves and we'll see what else there is. But I think today guys, we'll probably do one or two levels and um, it will just show you that the way the hybrid shrimp actually works. So let's have a little look. Let's have a little look. All right, so let's start from the left. Let me zoom in. These are my hulls on this side. You can see them, aren't they lovely? Guys, I'll, I'll actually put up some macro footage as well so you're not just seeing them from afar. But yeah, but this is my cull tank over this side and yeah, this tank has evolved quite a lot. Let me just show you the tank as well because all my tanks have kind of changed a little bit and you will see why, look. Right, so I've removed probably 99.9% .9 of the Java moss and I've removed nearly all the floating plants. I'm gradually trying to get rid of the duckweed but you know what it's like. And what I'm finding guys is the more that I do this I'm actually getting way more biofilm in the glass and way more algae, right? So you have to remember that biofilm and algae make up about 70% of shrimp's diet. So this is what you want to feed them. This is what you want to feed them, right? So on the bottom, you can see the cryptocornea. I didn't want to rip out the cryptocornea here in the bottom, but you can see the basic setup. These are soft water shrimp, so this is an active soil. The pH is around about 5.5. And yeah, this tank is just, it looks awesome. It just looks awesome. And yeah, we do things differently in my room. Like I have friends that do things the same as me. And I do things that I've learned off my friends. But in a nutshell, guys, what I do is I rarely do water changes. Unless I'm actually cleaning something like the sponge filters, which I actually have started to do more and more because... I'm actually finding that the tanks are keeping in much better condition if I clean the sponge filters maybe once a month. These are culls from my boa. So boas throw uh, blue bolts, blue steels, just in, and sometimes they're kind of a mix of the two. And um, yeah, you get pink ones as well. If you have a red boa, you will get pink ones like you see in the tank here. And guys, I just absolutely love them. And the great thing is, is this tank has not been set up for that long with this, with these shrimp in it. So when we add a boa culls to it, they take a little while to grow up. So all these guys now are actually at the, the stage where they're actually starting to have their old young in this tank as well. So it's like uh, any of the little white ones that you see in there are new ones. There's actually a lot of little tiny blue ones as well. And I just love them. I love them a bit. On this side we have the fancy tigers. Let me show you the top guys so you can see what I'm seeing with the, the filtration. And you can see where I've done it on some of my tanks and I've not fully done it on all of them yet. So the ones where the riser is still at the waterless, it's just ones that I've not adapted yet. But you can see, you see how much more turbulence there is here. So we look at the next tank. More turbulence. Because guys, if you have turbulence in your tanks, you're going to have more flow. It's just common sense. You're going to have more water flow. And so more water flow equals a cleaner tank, in my opinion. I don't mean to the point where 
um, is the extreme turbulence. But you can see the shrimp here, do they look happy enough? Yes, you can see all the things in the tank guys, like the banana leaves and whatever else. They're stationary, so there's enough flow there that is carrying any of the waste from the substrate up into the actual filters. And yeah, since I've been doing it this way, the tanks have been mega, mega clean. Mega clean. And of course, because we pulled it 90 odd percent of the plants, we're actually starting to get more green walls. And I'm, as a result, I'm actually seeing much more biofilm as well. Let's go up to the second level because, yeah, these are, there's a lot of shrimp in these tanks, but there's way, way more shrimp in the tanks above. All right, guys, before we actually go on to the second level on the other rock there, I want to show you this tank first because this tank is special to me because this is a tank that has always struggled in the shrimp room race, always, always struggled until I did what I was talking about in the previous clip where I removed the, the riser and I allowed there to be more flow in the tank. And since I've done that, there's actually baby shrimp in this tank now and the shrimp are mega active. The soil is super clear. Let me show you guys what I mean. Let's plant up. God, everything's at the opposite on this camera. Let me just lift you a second and you'll see what I mean. You see what I mean with the flow? So we have way, way more turbulence, right? And we're not losing all of the filtration here because you guys can see for yourself how clean the water is in this tank. Now this tank used to be absolutely choked full of mum, mum, not full of mum, full of mum and a waste from uh, the soil where it had powdered, right? So there used to be like a level of powder in this as well and it's all cleared up. And this tank is basically, you can see my hand there, hello. This tank is basically one of my little project tanks where I want more Taiwan bees, guys. And I don't have a lot of the old generic style of Taiwan bees, like King Kongs, and pandas and stuff like that. So I've actually put in a few a different shrimp here. These are golden, golden female, golden female, and we've got a, a female blue boat and another female blue boat. And we've got a female a crystal red here. Right, so these shrimp are actually buried. Let me take my hand away again. And the only male in here is that one there that you can barely just see, and it is a male King Kong shrimp. Right, so it has fertilized the eggs on all of these shrimp, and we will get actually more Taiwan bees from them, and we'll get variations from them as, as well, like um, pandas. Even though there's no pandas in the shop, we will get pandas from it because pandas are like basically like a lower grade of King Kong. All right, so here we have our Santas here, Santa grade uh, Super Crystal Reds. And yeah, this tank is doing okay. This is one of the ones guys where I'm, I'm refusing to give up. This used to be a really, really big colony, like thousands of shrimp in this tank. And I'm refusing to give up until I actually understand what's happening in the tank, why the numbers reduce to a certain level and why there's in general less baby shrimp raised. So this tank is treated the same as the others. It has the same with the filtration. It's been modified up the top here. You see the ones where um, I've done it on the standard double sponge filter. What I don't do it on guys is these ones here that have this little cup thing underneath the sponge because um, if my power ever fails, Right, and we, if we have the level of this one here below the water line, what will happen is these shrimp will climb into the sponge and they can actually get stuck in this little chamber under here in amongst all this material. Right, so it's not such a big deal on the other sponges like this because it's basically a tube in and out and that is it. So it's really easy for the shrimp to find the, the way in and out of the tank. Right, so this next one is my red boar tank and as i said i'll actually get more footage for you and stuff because yeah, I, I actually really like these guys i got these from my friend uh, raymond and he got them from boa and then from my boa that he also gave me i actually started to get red ones as well and they look absolutely gorgeous so these may be considered 
uh, coals from the boar, but they are actually boar. They have the the rings or the circle on the faces. They have all the marking. They have the full hood. And these ones are pretty cool. They're, they're red, but they're kind of um, pinkish. And in this tank specifically, you can see they have had some young, but it's not prolific yet. But um, yeah, when you see all my other tanks, see all it is, guys, is you put the shrimp in the tank, and then it's a waiting game until they breed. And then when you have a lot of shrimp, there is more and more shrimp coming faster and faster. So that's where this tank is here, where there's not so many shrimps, so it takes a little while to build up the numbers. Let me move you to the next tank. All right, so this is the next tank. This is a Galaxy Fishbone Tank. Galaxy, I was going to say Pinto, I actually can't see any Pintos in this tank. There's, so there's mostly Galaxy Fishbones, and most of these will have come from my boa, so you will actually see some of them that look like messy boa as well. But yeah, I thought I would show you the, the tank from this kind of distance out first, so you can see what I'm seeing with this turbulent water, guys. You can see it's like a theme in all my tanks now. A little bit of turbulent water, a real lack of floating plants, a little bit of moss here and there, and we have leaves because, yeah, apart from making this video, right, this is, I have basically, um, I only feed my tanks a solid food for the camera nowadays. Uh, so, yeah, the these guys probably would have got solid food like a month ago or something but in general i do the biofilm method on the leaves and you can see for yourself guys that you know you don't need fancy foods or whatever else to breed shrimp you don't it's that simple does it help in circumstances can it help yes but what I'm trying to say to you guys is, you look at my method, you look at the way I do it, no water changes, I don't feed any commercial foods, I only really put in banana leaves, and yep, it works, it just works. So a lot of these shrimp are smaller in here because, yeah, there's a lot of them. Lots of different grades of red ones, pink ones. I can actually see some boa in here. Fish bones are awesome. I'll probably have these for sale next year, I think. Because, yeah, my main thing that I love doing right now is boa. Because they, if you start getting really nice ones, guys, they just look so amazing. So we go to the next tank? Let me move you over. All right, my golden tank. Golden bees, looking good. Right, so one of you asked me what this was in the white thing in one of my last videos. And it's just a piece of zeolite. The zeolite helps to take out bad things, impurities in the water. I don't have an awful lot of it in my tanks. I just like to put the odd bit in now and again. Same, same theme again. You can see here, banana leaves. So I typically will add something this size to my tank once every two weeks now, guys. Not every week like you maybe saw me do before because you can see if you, if you keep on adding them every week, you just end up with a buildup of a lot of leaves in the tank and yeah you don't want too many leaves so let me zoom out a little bit and you can have a look at this tank just so you can see how this compares to the other one next to it almost the same slightly different filtration this is two double sponges we have the ADA Amazonia uh, tropical plant soil mix in the base that's what all my tanks are uh, some of them are only tropical plant soil, so the next tank I'm going to show you is only tropical plant soil. And it's good that I show you guys because it will show you that you can still breed a ton of shrimp on soils that are very common. Uh, so let me just show you this here. Um, sodium oxidators. I, all, I always forget to fill them up guys, but when I do I, I tend to do it because yeah I'm a great believer in the more oxygen in the water the better it is for the shrimp. All right same theme again here exactly the same theme we have two double sponges at the back and we have in this one we have only one that's doing the turbulence thing you can see here it's not as turbulent but I don't want to take the the riser off of this one because it has the chamber underneath the sponges and I said to you before, it's, I reckon it will be a death trap so yeah, I'm not going to take it off. So 
have a look at the tank itself. This tank, by the way guys, is about 50 litres-ish. It has tropical plant soil on the base. And would you say it works? Would you say it works? Look at the, there's some green walls here. I don't have green walls on every tank, but on most of them I do, on most of them I do. Uh, let's have a little look at the shrimp. Should we zoom in? Would you say the soil works? I would say it does. Right, so most of these shrimp are boa culls, what you would call boa culls. So right, I have another tank behind me that has my main, uh, my best quality boa. And then once they have young, they get transferred over to here. And then I watch these ones to see which ones will grow. Like, see, there's like ones like this here. There's, it looks like a really nice boa, doesn't it? See this one. But it has a marking on its cheek that I don't really like so much. It's like a boomerang marking. And I noticed, guys, before that I got lazy and I didn't remove that boomerang marking shrimp. And yeah, it is actually on a lot of the boa. And I want my boa to be like very high quality boa so I want them to be uh, ones that have very large circular face spots on the cheeks and the head uh, so I do have some like this but to get them like this you have to remove all the ones that are not what you want if that makes sense right so this one is a good example that's actually quite a nice little boa here this one it has the circle on the cheek and it has the little rocker thing over the top Think of it like a piston with a rocker thing, guys, if you, if you know what that is, if you're into engines. This is what you're looking for right on the cheek. And yeah, this one probably shouldn't be in the, this tank as a as a, um, as a cull, because I, I would say most of this tank is a cull. I take the guys, the best ones out of this tank, and I put them into a grow out tank upstairs. And yeah, they're, they're enjoying their real life in here, the breeding in here. As I said, no normal food normally. So these guys will get that, that food that you're seeing in here now probably once every month or two for the camera. If you're interested, well, it's actually Vin's food that I bought like a year ago. <laughs> right, let me show you. Just let me show you so you can kind of know what I mean with all this stuff. What I mean. Right, so I bought a kilo, or was it 500, I think it was 500 grams, Vin, Vin's Blizzard food here, right, it cost me a lot of money guys, it cost me almost, I think it was almost $200 to get this food, right, so you can see here, look, how much do I have left, so way up here, way up the top. So this is another tank with the same type of shrimp as the one right next door to it. So this is, it's just a continuation. These ones are slightly better, as in they have big, nice face spots. So I'm actually removing shrimp from this tank that have the bigger, nicer face spots. Some of them don't, some of them have this boomerang thing. But yeah, you can see the way this is working where you move the shrimp on. And you gradually get better and better shrimp guys. And this, this tank is quite nice in that it has um, the turbulent thing with the double sponges there. You see how clean my water is. We have no real plants floating in the top, which is quite a key thing. So you have to keep on top of that guys. If you want to have some kind of green wall. Let me move the, this camera over a little bit because it, from this side you'll see it there. Like there, look. If you want some kind of green wall that your shrimp are going to feed on when they're not feeding on your leaves and your soil, then you're going to want to remove anything that's floating in the tank. And if you remove as much of the plant mass as you can, you will start to get green walls like this. Right, and in my room, I think my lights are on. <coughs> I think my lights are on something like six hours a day. So they're not even on that long and I'm getting some nice growth like this and that's a big ball it's a water tank growing in the middle it's going to make a comeback have you seen it my tanks look so water tank is coming back okay so there's my video for today thank you guys for watching like and subscribe like usual and if you have time please watch another one it will come up right here thank you very much